Hello everyone, it's L678 here. Today I'm going to show you how to make one-way collision platforms in UDK and Sonic GDK. What I'm talking about is, in most platforming games, the character can jump through a platform, platform and land on top. UDK doesn't actually support this by default, but you can get it working through Kismet. So what we're going to do is place a mesh into our world. Just raise it up a little bit. If you right-click on it, and convert it into a mover. This will make sure it's an interpactor. Interpactors can be moved in matinee, but you can also change the properties in Kismet, which is what we want here. If you go into the properties here, and just make sure it's got no collision. Close that. And go into your actor classes. Under common and under trigger, we need to place a trigger pawns only actor here. Just make sure this is above the platform. If you go into the properties, you can change the radius to whatever size you need. Just for the sake of this video, this isn't accurate. So if you were to do this in your own project, you want to make sure that this is this is perfect. And you need to raise it so there's a little bit of a gap between the platform and the trigger. So now if you go into Kismet with the trigger selected, if you right click in an empty space and select new events using trigger, touch. And first thing, you want to make sure that under the sequence event, that max trigger count is set to zero and also re-trigger delay is zero as well. If this isn't set, what will happen is the collision will only be set once, be it when you jump onto it or when the level is loaded and then it's useless. Next select the trigger, uh, select the platform sorry. Right click and make a new object variable using the interpactor. And right click again and under new action actor we need two change collision nodes. And you want to link one up to the touched input and one to the empty input. And the target needs to go to the mesh that your platform is. Now, the one that is um, attached to the touched input, if you click on the node, make sure that block actors is checked and the collision type is block all. And for the one that's empty, to make sure that it's got no collision. So what this represents is there is no collision on this platform until you touch it and then it becomes solid. Just need to move this up a little bit. So I'll demonstrate this in game. See now you can jump through it. There's a couple of things you need to test at this point. If the trigger is too high and you crouch or you stomp, you'll go straight through the mesh because you are no longer touching the trigger. Now, like I said before about accuracy, if this is your own project, then you need to make sure that this is correct properly. The only reason I'm not showing you right now is because well, a lot of people use the colors model or just a standard model, and this works fine. You also don't want to make it too low because sometimes you can jump and Sonic will uh, collide within the mesh. It's not a problem really because when you start to move, um, he'll jump to the correct position, but it does lead to, like I said, a couple of visual glitches. The next thing we're going to do, and this is only for if the platform is moving, but it is worth doing it just as a general practice. If you right click on the trigger, go to properties, and go into the attachment, and I'll check hard attach, and then you need to type in the base, the name of this mesh, now it's interpactor5 here, interpactor5. Now the reason I've done this is because if we were to move this platform in matinee, then 
the trigger will now move with it. So you can still have this one-way collision behavior while the platform is moving. Now, just to close this, you need to do this uh, sequence for every platform in your level, which is a little bit of a pain, but remember you can just highlight the whole thing by pressing Control and Alt, copying it, and then you can always right click on each node and assign a different trigger or a different platform, whichever you need to do. For this whole exercise, you can also use a dynamic trigger volume. Now, if you're working in 3D, if, if your level is 3D, I'd recommend using the dynamic volume simply because it's square, it's a rectangular shape. This, you see, is cylindrical. There are these corners at the end where the trigger no longer touches it, so you can walk to the end and fall right through it. With a blocking volume this wouldn't happen because it can cover the entire mesh. If you're working in 2D though, the, this trigger will do fine because it's not as though you can come at the platform from any angle. Now, just to close again, there's a, a couple of tutorials online for this issue. I think there's a video called Soft Platforming that uses a, it shows a slightly different way of doing this. Again, I mean, this is just the way that I I use uh, one-way collision in my project. It may, might not work for you, but it's worth having a look at the other videos anyway. Anyway, I hope this has helped, and if you've got any issues, please write a comment below.